There you go. I hope you're well. The puppies are escaping all the bloody time. That's because somebody wasn't smart and didn't build a secure run before they got to that stage. Hey guys. I'll put some food in there. Make a hell of a mess, eh, po? I'm looking for pups that are gonna show initiative. This one over here just coming out of the house. That'll be safe zone. You can see mum. It's a little girl. She's the runt. She's missing that normal tucker. Leave it, Pope. Not for you. Behave. Number eight wire. Wire tars. And corrugated iron. That's what New Zealand was built on. That was the axe that uh, we broke. So I went to get a hickory stick to replace it. And you know what? The stick was more expensive, the hand at least, than to buy a whole axe. So I just bought another axe. And it's still a tool. You can still use it for stuff. Stuff like uh, this. It'll be a wire cutter. Now it's gonna, it's gonna last about three weeks, so I'm not doing something that's permanent here because I'll just be pulling it down. Hence, wire and tin instead of four by twos and posts and concrete and all that shit. That, let's tie it up. Here we our first wall. So, uh, yeah, gonna put another piece there. And this here, this come off the houseboat. It's the uh, walkway. And I, I knew I didn't throw it away for a purpose because I knew there'd be something that would come in useful for one day here on the farm. So that's going to go at the end. Right, we're going to find some more corrugated iron. There's bound to be some around this place. There's all sorts of treasure on this farm. We're going to rob a bit of tin off the boys' hut. Oh, that solves that problem, we'll take that one. Oh, look at that. That fits perfectly. Down the side. One on each side. I'll smack another wire tied down the inside of that. And that piece of wood hanging off there. Well, we'll hang a bit of rope off that with something for the puppies to play with when they get a bit bigger. That's perfect, isn't it? Awesome. Stick that down there. Just like that. Beautiful. And what I'll do is I'll hammer that in. There. And I'll just nail my bit of corrugated iron. The next bit from there to there. Oh yeah, we're getting there. And it's pretty solid. What we need now is something for these guys here to climb up. Cause that's a big step for them and I think I've got just a thing here that <clears throat> that is off a fridge and I knew I'd need it for something one day so I kept it I'm glad I did jeez it's almost like it was built for it isn't it it's got a wee grip on it and everything One here. There you go, team. Got a wee walkway now. Jump over that. Can't do much about that. So, there you go. So, that's where you lay on the eggs, you bastard, eh? Yeah, I wonder where you got to. Anyway, yeah, uh, this here, it's off a broken bird cage. It was the bottom of it. I was going to throw it away, but I figured I might need it for something one day, and as usual, so now I've got a job, I'm going to make them into a toilet box for the dogs because they uh, they need to start going to the toilet in the dirt and that's what I'm going to do right now is get some dirt out of here Ooh, there's a bit of bloody glass all sorts of shit being buried on this farm, you never know in the old days people used to just bury shit 
It's actually not bad soil down there. Get a bit of that out of there. That yellow stuff is clay. So my name is Clay Tall Stories for the channel. Clay was the name of the first dog I ever went hunting with when I came back from Europe. And it's also the name of the Moteri clay which I was born on, this clay here. So it's got a double meaning. But it was actually the dog's name that gave me the name for the first bit. I'm going to climb all over me rather than in your dirt box. Oh yeah, this guy's into it. He's barking at it. Wagging his tail. You guys coming out? Bit of fun out here, coming out? This one's a runt, not getting enough milk. Let's even get some feed, mate. Come on, need to fatten you up. Not really interested, eh? Probably related to Pace. Pace never wants to eat his food. Up. Gonna change their blankets inside. They're a bit dirty. I have to hold the little runt up because she can't reach. And she's uh, underweight, but the rest can reach the ground, but she can't, she's too small. And these guys here, I we'll want some too. Yeah, mate, you hear me. That's little boy po making all the noise. They're eating little dog biscuits. These guys are getting all their milk. That's about a pipe, and as you can see, I've run the chainsaw down it, and I've cut it. It's going to go on top of this tin here. That'll stop Poe. Cut this off when she jumps over. She normally goes over here, so that'll be good. Are unsorted. 13 bucks for all of these blankets for puppies. What you guys are seeing there is the helicopter going across the cherries, blowing the water off them. The price of having cherries bloody expensive. I wouldn't be a cherry grower for a wart on me bum. It's a lot of work. I've got to put those nets over them, keep the birds off, got to spray them all year and then when the rain comes like it has now, it buggers the cherries and I'll show you what it's done to our plums, exact same thing, it splits them. That's been going all morning and if it rains again later on he'll have to put the helicopter over it again. So I thought for the uh, old cherry growers this year at Christmas, when you eat your Christmas cherries, I wouldn't grow cherries. They're just like such a stressful thing to grow because one lot of rain can just bugger them. That helicopter goes in the middle of the night sometimes. Sometimes, you know, I've had it like been woken up super early in the morning or even at midnight because they've got to get the water off the cherries. And I'll take up to our plums we've got growing up here and I'll show you exactly what I mean. There's so much rain as you can see, it's wet where I'm walking. All the grass is wet, all the plants are wet and it has a devastating effect on any of those varieties. So we've got wild plums growing here on the orchard, or the farm at least, up here you can see. And look what the rain's done to them. See that? It's split them. These guys have only just, they, they get split and they go rotten. That's a big piss there Bruno. The tank was full. Look at that. These plums are still green, they're still growing. And they've got so big that it, it splits them. These guys here were all like good to eat. And the water's it's buggered them. I'm going close so you can see, look every one split. And that's exactly what's happening to the cherries over there so uh, it's not good not good at all they get absolutely buggered and it must be so disheartening for the growers because you know they spend all year spraying mowing maintaining 
G'day mate, how you going? Did you get scared by that helicopter? Come, come on. Come on. Calm down. The puppies are at the stage now where I'm feeding them outside the box. Actually, I'll grab the puppy food while I'm talking to you. What they're really like is they're like uh, offal. They're like um, kidney and liver and heart. And brains and stuff all chopped up. I know they're into that. Real trouble, eh? So uh, I'll be doing a road trip around New Zealand delivering these guys to patrons. Come on, you're gonna come out for a fee? Be a toilet outside. I'll put a little toilet box in here, but as the rain has just made everything wet, but they're dry on the inside. Cool little pups. So yesterday I was in Motawaika and for $13 I bought a whole load of blankets from the family shop there that sells you know, secondhand old clothes and stuff. So I've taken all of the blankets out. I was going to wash them and stuff, but they're just buggered so they can go to the tip. And I've got good old fresh ones. So it's a really good place to go and get blankets for your animals, pets. And particularly these smaller dogs like Pace and B, they need a blanket in their box. And the puppies do too. So we've got some blankets for them. Look at the grass growing down here. I took the sheep out and put them in here. I was hopeful that uh, I could keep the tame one on the rope and the wild one would hang around it, but the wild one ran away and joined the rest of the sheep up on the paddock up there, and it was a bit of a drama to get him back in here. It's been that much rain, the driveway got flooded out. It's hard to believe it's supposed to be summertime here in New Zealand, and I'm wearing woolen jersey, oil skin to keep the rain off, and a hat, and everything's wet. Look at the driveway, man, it's been just flushed out. A lot of tourists come to New Zealand in the summertime, particularly Germans, they come here this time of year and they think, oh, I'm going to have a time on the beach, and they, they, they think, what the fuck's going on? It's raining, it's cold. We get, like, mental uh, weather at this time of year. If you want to know what I think about the weather in New Zealand, one of the best times, I think, to come to New Zealand is the middle of winter. I love the winter days because they're freezing cold in the morning. You know, there's a bit of ice around. Face, get in! Face, come. He hears me talking, he thinks he can go. Get him behind. Stay. Freezing cold in the morning, but then you get these nice, beautiful, clear days. Great for hunting. You go out to the sounds, fishing, and just beautiful weather. Get him behind, heal up. Get these dogs in while we're just walking here. All of this has been washed out. This whole driveway is like stuffed. Really, really, yeah. Uh, uh, get him behind! I haven't said go. Pace, get him behind. We're all waiting for the command. The reason I'm keeping it. Get him behind, Pace! Get him behind. Heal up. I'll stop talking because it's confusing him. Heal. I hear my voice now confused. Heal. Get okay, go. There's baby ducks down there. That's why I'm keeping them baby. Baby tame. No, they're not the tame ones, they're the wild ones. There are some tame ones here too. There's some ones that are quite tame, they're the other the wild ones just going around the corner. There they go. Oh, Bruno's not running anywhere. He's just chilling. She's windy. Pace enjoying running around. He's been in his uh, box this morning. Poe's smelling something on the wind, aren't you, Poe? What's that, eh? Hey, what you smelling there, Poe, eh? Hey, Gil, what you smelling, eh? It's cold. But it does not feel like, it doesn't feel like summer even slightly. It feels like winter. I've got cold hands, it's a cold wind blowing from the south and it's it's bloody cold now the logan berries they're wild here on the farm but they are starting to come in now as is the uh the blackberries and another week i'll be munching on them right down here you can see look at them there's a rabbit hole this is where i shot that rabbit that uh, b got the other day the logan berries they're like a blackberry but they're a little bit longer 
paces looking down there for a rabbit. That's where we got the last one. I shot it, I couldn't find it, and B went down and retrieved it for me. It was a beautiful retrieve. These aren't a great crop, and the rain has stuffed them up a bit too, I think. I think they've got a wee bit too big, too fast, too soon. Lovely berries to eat. I eat them with coconut cream. Morning, Bolt. How you doing? Hey. I always look at that piece of wine and think he can smash right through that so easy. Ah, oh, he'd have a crack at me, wouldn't you, man? Yeah, okay. Calm down, calm down. Calm down. Hey, buddy. Yeah, you'd like to smash me, wouldn't you? I know. This piece of bloody wire. <laughs> The other one did, the other one just about happy in the pump shoot over there. Calm down mate, calm down. He just smashed me, he'd love to smash, eh? Like he just goes straight through. They're, they're tubby bastards, eh? Shouldn't be that close to him. Good boy. Hey, hey buddy. He's not running a good boy, he's just accident waiting to happen. He just turn around and smash right through that wire, it'd be like, not gonna hold me back. It was that pump shoot over there where I got chased? Right, I'll turn me back on. I hope he, uh, <laughs> he doesn't think silly. A lot of fun on the farm. I actually like the cattle. and uh, If I ever own a piece of land here myself, I'll fatten a few calves for eating, because I like eating steak. I like the fattiest steak. Any of you guys out there ever eaten that Kobe steak? I never have. I've seen it on uh, YouTube and I've looked at it and dreamed about it. It's got so much fat through it. Holy cow, it's like, well it is a holy cow. It's a the most expensive steak you can buy in the world, thousand dollars for a wee steak. Oh, I just I couldn't. Who could spend that? You know. Get him, B. Get him, Pace. Heel up. Good dog. Good dog. Good dog, Kai. Good dog, Pat. She's looking really oh, like she's got all this dirt on her because she's been in her hole, the cave that she goes into. She made that cave for her puppies, and she spends a lot of time in it. So she made it for her puppies, but she goes in there to get away from the pups and to cool off when it's hot. Anyway, that's uh, today's uh, today's vlog on the, the farm and at home here. Just another talk about stuff in general. It's Christmas time. It's a mad time of the year. It's a time of the year where often you will end up being with family members that you don't always want to be with. A lot of family feuds happen this time of the year. So. If you're getting together with family and people, before you even meet them, just say to yourself, I won't say anything that is going to be hurtful. I won't do anything that I'll regret later on. I'll bite my tongue and I'll just show my love. And all the past things that have happened, all the hurts, and things that I felt were injustice or something that's not fair, that's my stuff. I'll hang on to that and work with it in my own time. I won't bring it up at the family dinner. So many families have fights at Christmas time. It shouldn't be about that. It's a time for giving. It's a time for being together. A time for loving. And a time for being grateful for being alive. This year there will be families that are sitting at the table without someone, someone who has passed. And the worst has got to be for parents that have lost children. You know, that has to be, the, as a father, I, any families that are sitting around this Christmas who have lost a son or a daughter or somebody that they've, they've been raising, may not be complete blood, could be like some of the children, that's a time for you to all gather around each other and support each other and show love. Life is short. We're here for a... It's a very short time, and we're here for a good time, so try to support each other if it's, uh, if it's a, a tough Christmas for some of you. And for the rest of you that are having a great Christmas, go steady on the whiskies. <laughs> Don't overindulge too much in, in the food, you know. Be mindful about what you're putting in your mouth because you will pay for it at the other end if you don't. It's as simple as that. There's no point in just pigging out and pigging out. I know we do, but really, at the end of the day, you're just going to make yourself unwell and, and you're going to pay the price. You cannot get something from nothing. You cannot, you know, whether it's you're taking a drug to feel happy or you're putting food in your mouth to feel happy, depending on what it is, there's always a price to pay if it's not good. Get in, po. So uh, be mindful of what goes into your mouth. But even more importantly, be extra mindful about what comes out of your mouth, what you say. 
really be mindful. Just better sometimes to say nothing and bite your tongue. And I'm saying this because I've been to other people's families Christmas. I haven't been to a family Christmas. My family doesn't really get round at Christmas time. And we don't do the family thing. My my uh, mum and dad go off and spend time with another family each year, and and uh, it's something that. Uh, we don't really make a huge celebration out, but I have gone to visit other families and been invited, and I've seen it happen, and it's like, this shouldn't happen. So yeah, just stay mindful about that. That's uh, my reminder. And enjoy the time off work if you've got some Christmas holidays. And my message to you guys that have been working so bloody hard all year, and have now got some holidays, make shit happen. Motivate yourself. Even if you don't feel like, even if you're just exhausted after the year's work and you just feel like you're absolutely stuffed, then make epic shit happen. Because once you're actually out there doing it, you're going to say, whoa, I'm so glad I got myself out in this environment. Whoa, I'm so glad I, I climbed this hill. Man, I never thought I could do this. You know, you'll find that the time goes so fast and you're back at work again. But when you're back at work, you'll look back and you'll think, hey, I really made the most out of my, my free time. I didn't waste it. And I know it's hard to motivate yourself sometimes. It could be a health reason that's slowing you down. It could be monetary. But you don't need a lot to make a lot happen. You just need a little bit of creativity to think about it. And really, you know, go to the beach. Go for a walk with someone you love. Go and visit someone you haven't seen for a while. Make time to see other, other friends that don't have the means and resources to travel. Do stuff. Right, I'm going to uh, take these guys back, feed them all, and smash into this day. I've got a lot of work I've got behind with because of the rain. It's uh, made that way, but uh, just wanted to smash out a, a vlog and a bit of a talk to you. Be good. You can't be good. Be careful. See you soon. Well, Bruno's down there in here waiting for us to come back because he's not talking that far anymore. smell the grass. He's still enjoying being here. What you doing Bruno? I suppose can't even hear me. He's eating grass. Probably time to worm him again. See ya.